welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's June 11, 2014, and let's get straight into our top story tonight. FBI director confirms criminal probe of the VA, which this is good news because it's largely a, a distraction by the Bergdahl situation, so I'm glad we can get some more light on this. FBI director James Comey confirmed Wednesday that the Bureau's Phoenix branch has opened a criminal investigation of the Veterans Affairs Department amid mounting calls on Capitol Hill for the Justice Department to get more involved. So, you know, we see uh, all the veterans being denied care, and that's one of the big reasons why people join the military. They say, hey, you know, I'll join the military, I'll be set for life, and it comes, uh, comes back. You know, you don't get that care. We've seen Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs, our very own, he goes to the VA last month in May, says, hey, I have internal bleeding, I need help. They say, come back in July. And many similar stories of people all over the country. And regardless if you believe in everything the military does, you know, I've been critical of them growing the opium in Afghanistan, but I'm not mad at the individual troops. I'm mad at the guys who gave the order. So hopefully we can get some justice for these veterans and, you know, so they can find out that their health care should be absolute if they serve this country. But one thing President Obama says is not absolute is your second amendment. We have this, Obama endorses Australian style gun confiscation. A Couple of decades ago, Australia uh, had a mass shooting, mm -hmm. uh, similar to Columbine or, or Newtown. Uh, and Australia just said, well, that's it. We're, we're not doing, we're not do seeing that again. Yeah. And uh, basically imposed very severe, tough uh, gun laws, and they've never, they haven't had a mass shooting since. And there's one more thing I'd like to point out in the article. Invoking his role as a parent, Obama pushes the notion that American gun owners are collectively responsible for mass shootings. This country has a lot of soul searching to do, Obama said. This is becoming the norm, and we take it for granted in ways that as a parent terrify me. So this is a president, uh, he has an administration that has run guns into Mexico with Operation Fast and Furious. And you know, you guys may have seen the clip, he says, well, I have a big government, I have a lot of moving parts, I can't be responsible for what everybody does. Okay, maybe you don't know what everybody's doing, but once you find out what they're doing, why don't you hold the people responsible? And by responsible, I don't mean you let the Justice Department investigate themselves. You know, or you have the other uh, situations like with the Syrian rebels. You have an administration who is giving arms to Syrian rebels, Al-Qaeda rebels, and he's very much involved in this, very much knows exactly what's going on. Al-Qaeda rebels who are killing people in Syria, killing Christians, uh, doing all types of horrible things, but he wants to blame the U.S. gun owner. And to go back to the Mexico angle for one second, this is a president who goes down to Mexico and says the reason Mexicans have such high gun violence is because of the United States Second Amendment but as we said, his administration is running guns down there to known drug dealers, known cartel members, because we have all this talk about background checks here in the States. Meanwhile, I guess they did do the background checks and found out that these guys were corrupt, uh, criminal enough to deserve these weapons. But let's go back and talk about the Syrian angle, the, uh, the Al-Qaeda rebels uh, specifically, because it's not just in Syria. We also have situations going on in Iraq. And the headline reads, Islamic jihadis take over second largest city in Iraq but al-Qaeda wasn't even in Iraq until the U.S. invaded. And if you go to Infowars.com, you can see a, uh, a database there, a graph. And if you look at the graph, you can see about 2002, you had this large spike of terrorist activity, or should I say activities not carried out by the government specifically. And the article reads, al-Qaeda wasn't even in Iraq until the U.S. invaded the country and that the U.S. policy in Libya is partly responsible for sending an influx of al-Qaeda terrorists and heavy weapons into Iraq. To make matters worse, the army fled, so militants seized huge caches of U.S. supplied weapons, including Humvees. And if you go to the article on Infowars.com, you can see these guys, the al-Qaeda rebels, walking around, looking at Humvees and other, uh, other armaments. You know, al-Qaeda's gonna pop some tags, they only got $20 in their pocket, so what do you do? You go to the U.S. cache, and you steal military weaponry. And people will say, well, isn't this a good reason to bring these things home, bring these big MRAPs and other things to the United States so the terrorists can't get them? No, because when you bring these things home, number one, you have military vehicles on the streets of the United States. And I mean, what does that say about our country? And it's not because, you know, some guy wanted to dress up like the Joker and kill some people. No, that just shows that they're have, they have a domestic arms race to get these things on the streets. But on top of that, you're feeding into the military-industrial complex when you bring these things back to the states. 
because you can't just take this thing around the corner to Joe's, you know, body shop. You have to get specialized equipment, specialized training, specialized guys to come and work on these vehicles. You know, these things aren't your normal everyday minivans. And on top of that, you know, you think about the things going on in these, uh, these foreign countries, these foreign conflicts, that's also feeding the military industrial co complex. Whether they bring the things back home, they blow them up, they leave them there, you know, you have, you know, parking lots full of these military vehicles that have never even been used. You know, some of them have, a good number of them have, but there's some that have never even been used. Once again, feeding into the military industrial complex. So, you know, don't feed into the military industrial complex is basically what I'm getting at. And Kurt Nimmo has that article as well. Iraq would not even have al-Qaeda al if the state allowed citizens to be armed. And that's a very real statement because you think about this. It would be like some foreign government coming to the United States, giving the Crips and Bloods all these arms and then saying, hey, you go deal with the problem. It's like, well, you gave these guys the arms. Why don't you go fix the problem? And then sometimes they don't even want you to come fix the problem. Okay, you gave these guys the arms. We have to deal with it. We'll deal with it in our own way. We don't need your intervention anymore because you've wrecked our country enough. So you can find those articles on Infowars.com. And speaking of wrecking the country, we have been wrecked economically. And that's very true. It has a very good illustration on this. 19 reasons why you can laugh when anyone tells you that the economy is in good shape. Now, for the sake of time, we won't go through them all, but we'll hit some of the high points here. We'll start with number one. Radio Shack is closing an additional 200 stores on top of what they already said they would close. Number two, the first quarter earnings of this year, uh, the top U.S. giants, uh, retailer giants, missed the estimates by the largest gap in 13 years. Uh, number three, one out of every three grocery store workers in the state of California is on some form of public assistance. And I'll briefly tell you guys my uh, grocery store experience. Back when I was in high school, I worked at a grocery store. I made six, seven dollars an hour. Now, I was in high school, so I was living at home, so it wasn't that big of a deal. But, you know, if you try to raise a family on that, it's very hard. And people may say, well, why don't you just give everybody a raise? And I have no issue with people making more money. My thing I want uh, people to understand is if you have a Federal Reserve that's consistently devaluing your currency, regardless of what they pay you, if they, okay, if you get, do get your $15 an hour raise, you know, seven years from now when $15 an hour is the new $7 an hour, you can be right back out there again saying that you need more money. It's the system that's broken, not just the fact that, you know, McDonald's doesn't want to pay you more. And let's look at one more here. According to one recent survey, this is number five, 52% of Americans cannot even afford the house that they are living in right now. So like I said, you have a, a Federal Reserve devaluing your currency. And, you know, so not only that, but you don't want to stay in the sacking grocery jobs for your entire life. You don't want to say, uh, you know, shaking the fries out for the rest of your life. You want to go up because, you know, hey, make more money. But, bro, you're not going to drive a Ferrari, sacking groceries at, you know, the Quickie Mart or wherever it is that you work. So, you know, when they tell you that, the economy is, is good and everything's rosy, just say, no, it's not. It is not rosy. And we'll end our segment tonight on this. Illegal immigrants intentionally surrendering to Border Patrol to gain entry to the United States. Our Border Patrol is doing the best and the most kind and humane thing uh, with, uh, with the children. Border Patrol has always been a good partner of the city of Nogales, and they work very closely with us in the city of Nogales. Now as a city, we need to help Border Patrol so that they can uh, accomplish their, their, their goal and uh, making sure that these children are all taken care of. It used to be that people tried to avoid Border Patrol ICE if they were illegal immigrants, but now they just walk across the border, hey, I give up, and then the Border Patrol says, hey, okay, you're here in the United States, we'll drive you to a facility, free food, free clothes, uh, you know, free facilities, you can get uh, in-state tuition in states like Texas, and it's a whole good deal. So we'll talk more about this, and I don't have a problem with people coming here to the United States, just do so legally. But we'll talk to uh, the crew there in San Antonio right now at one of these facilities where this is going on, where they're spending your taxpayer money to house illegal immigrants. I'm kind of the the uh, Rand Paul situation, let's get rid of some of these illegal immigrants and exchange them for Marines or, you know, maybe even send a few Democrats down there. Whatever, whatever it takes to get the ball rolling again. But stay tuned for that because we'll be talking to the guys right after this break. But first, if you like this broadcast and you would like to see it continue, stop by PrisonPlanet.tv and get yourself a 15-day free trial. You can get the Alex Jones Show, the Nightly News, the Rants, the Special Reports, and so much more at PrisonPlanet.tv. And stay tuned for the end of our show 
because we'll have some excerpts from the Alex Jones radio show. We'll talk to Telly Blackwood of Off the Hook TV and also the Food Babe and her new initiative to find out what exactly is in your beer. So stay tuned for all that. This is the InfoWars Nightly News. And welcome back. We've seen the stories about immigrants pouring into the country. And now the InfoWars crew is down in San Antonio at one of the military facilities where the immigrants are being held. Uh, InfoWars reporters Kit Daniel and also Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs are on the scene. How are you doing, guys? Good, good, good. Okay, so first tell us where you are and what's going on out there. Well, we're here at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas, where one of the former uh, basic training dorms has been reappropriated to house about 2,000 illegal immigrants. Wow. And we, uh, we found the area where they're being housed. There's a, it's uh, barricaded with fi uh, fences all around it with uh, privacy screens to try to keep people from looking into it. Uh, there's, a, there's several porta potties in the area, one that even says restricted for youth only, indicating for the illegal uh, children, mm -hmm. illegal uh, youth immigrants. Also, there's, we saw about two 18-wheeler uh, trailers from HEB that are likely there providing food. And for uh, we, people who don't know who aren't from Texas, HEB is a, uh, a grocery store. Go ahead, Kit. Yes. And uh, also, I got some footage of, of several uh, loads of trash. Um, to, to back up, the, I talked to the Lackland Public Affairs, and they told me that they were not on the lead on this uh, housing these immigrants. They had, the Department of Health and Human Services, the, uh, and I believe it's the Administration of Family and Children in particular of HHS, as take is uh, in charge of the housing and processing of these illegal immigrants, and they have actually subcontracted it to a group called BCS out of San Antonio, which is a nonprofit faith-based organization. And if, when you when we bring in the footage later, you'll see uh, BCFS uh, to, uh, men wearing BCFS shirts and whatnot. So let me so ask you this, Kit. Uh, are the people there, are they mostly children? Are they our children, all children? Uh, how many children do you see out there? Let's, uh, I'll let, I'll let uh, Staff Sergeant Biggs answer that question. Yeah, most of the uh, what I saw were from, I'd say, teenagers, from anywhere from teenagers all the way down to, you know, maybe, what, five years, you yeah. think? Yeah. yeah, five years old, somewhere in that in that area. They're running around, you know, playing right now. A group of children were singing songs. Um, you could hear that over the fence. But, you know, one of the, the interesting things is, though, is we have these illegal immigrants staying here on a military facility while homeless veterans are outside the gate right now mm -hmm. with no shelter and no food. But these kids are being flown in and brought in by the busloads and being taken care of. I just think that's... It is. It's just wrong because you recall Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs, they didn't want people to go to uh, the various monuments around the United States because of the se sequestration, because of the budget cuts, and they spent more money trying to keep people out of these monuments than actually just letting them in and just do what they want to do and uh, celebrate their country anyway. But Staff Sergeant, let me ask you this, because you're a military man. Have you ever seen anything like this happen on the military base where they just brought in illegal immigrants to, to house at the facility? Negative. First time. Also, one of the, the strange things I noticed as well, and I was telling the guys as we were coming up, all the guards today, I don't know this is how it's, you know, if it's something is up or whatever, but it's weird that they have M4 strapped around their chest. That's usually not something you see, maybe a sidearm, but every gate right now, all the MPs have MP, or M4s strapped to their chest. Now, I don't know if that's because of them housing these kids here, but I do know that the PAO didn't want anybody here filming and they didn't want us talking about this stuff so i, I kind of think that's a little odd don't you yes i i called the pao before we arrived on the scene and what she told me she confirmed that yes they were housing illegal immigrants here on base but what was also more disturbing was the fact that she said that no no press access they had one media day uh recently where they allowed press on base without cameras. They wouldn't allow press to even come on and even film or even interview any of the immigrants or the staff. Or, so were you guys able to actually make it on the grounds of the base? Is that where you are right now? Yes, yes. Okay, so you guys made it in and you got your shots out there, but they said they're not.